Hello, welcome back. I'm John Stevens. In this section, we're going to talk about the combustor section. And the combustor is basically located in the compressor rear frame, which is this flange to this flange on an LM6000. This combustor is a SAC, a single annular combustor. However, there's a second type of combustor, which is a dry low emissions combustor, or what we call a DLE. Chris Olson is going to walk you through both types and discuss the details of the different types of combustors. In the previous episode, we discussed the LM6000 and major components. We discussed the operation of a general gas turbine as shown here now. We went through the overall operations just at kind of at a high level. In this episode, we're going to go into the details associated with emissions of concern and how they're produced and ways to mitigate those emissions. So primarily, we're going to talk about the combustor assembly, and we'll just go over the PC versus PD, or a water injection machine versus a dry low emissions or DLE type machine. So this is just kind of the generic overview of of representative of any gas turbine, but we're going to focus on the combustors today. So let's start with emissions of concern. So when we talk about emissions, there's lots of emissions, but generally we're going to talk about nitrogen oxides, commonly called NOx. There's a couple different actions taking place when we talk about the formation of NOx. So what happens is there are two sources of nitrogen we have thermal nitrogen, which is just taking nitrogen from the air, and then during the combustion process, it'll combine with oxygen to make 2NO or nitric oxide. There's also, depending upon the type of fuel, fuel-bound nitrogen, the more crude the fuel, the more likely you are to have fuel-bound nitrogen. Majority of the nitrogen in like a natural gas facility or number two diesel liquid fuel machine is going to come from the nitrogen found in the air. So once we have the nitric oxide, it'll quickly react with, uh, with other oxygen also found in the air, and it's going to make nitrogen dioxide. When we look at these two together, we have nitrogen oxide plus nitrogen dioxide, and we're just going to collectively call those NOx. NOx is formed at really high temperatures. This is found in the flame in the actual combustor assembly. So when we look at our curve, we start down here in the lower temperature, and I say lower relative, you know, we have a pretty steady rate of NOx production. And then there is a point where, you know, at a certain temperature, you start having a runaway. Carbon monoxide is another emission of concern. We've all heard of that before. It kind of follows the opposite shaped curve. At lower temperatures, our carbon monoxide is really high. So the carbon monoxide gets burnt out at a higher temperature. So we kind of want to operate where these two meet. So we keep carbon monoxide low and nitrogen oxides or NOx low. So we're going to make a, an operational box around where those two curves meet. This means that we can maintain our emissions as, as low as possible with our machine. So having discussed the formation of NOx and carbon monoxide, we've defined that there is a, a small window where we minimize both types of emissions. What we really need to do is control the flame length and the flame temperature. And there are two primary ways to go about doing this. One, we use a water injection. So that is tied with a single annular combustor or what we'll call SAC. And all 30 nozzles are emitting fuel mixed with air and ignited all at the same time, regardless of megawatt loading. And they inject water in through the same nozzles to keep the temperature in this, in this box that we've assigned. The other way to do this is a dry low emissions machine or DLE. It does not use water. It has stages and staging valves and only certain ones 
have ignition based on the megawatt loading, and that's on a program. The wet machine or water injection PC style machine is far more common. It just comes down to the matter of access to plentiful amounts of water. Disadvantage, you got to have some type of water conditioning facility. So reverse osmosis, EDI, because you've got to use demineralized water because we're injecting this straight into, into the machine and you need plenty of it. Whereas with the DLE machine, if the facility is located somewhere where there's not plentiful amounts of water or the customer doesn't want to build an RO EDI and water storage you know, and water forwarding system, then you can use the DLE machine, but it also comes with disadvantages because it needs to be tuned based on ambient weather conditions. So you might have a spring tune, summer tune, fall tune, winter tune, just depends upon where the unit is located. It's also more expensive to maintain, but again, you don't have the requirement for you know plentiful amounts of demineralized water. So we'll go ahead and start with the, the, the build out of a PC model or a water injection type machine. So what we have here is just a shot of the combustor externally for a PC model on an LM6000. Not a whole lot to see. You can see airlines and fuel nozzles, water connections coming in. But we'll go ahead and take a look at what's inside that combustor assembly. So these are the combustor liners. There's an inner and an outer liner. All of the weight is supported from the aft end of the liner assembly. You can see that it is made of grooved plates. They overlap. They're resistance welded to each other. The the side that faces the high temperature or the flame has a thermal coating applied to it to increase longevity. The shape is very specific and we I do have a sketch that will show you the overall configuration. Even if it was assembled, I can't get a great photo once it's put together, but I do have a sketch of, of, of how it's assembled. And it's shaped the way it is because we're back to that concept. I'm trying to control flame length and flame temperature so we can keep that carbon monoxide and nitrous oxide in our in our little box so we can minimize our emissions. You'll also see that there's holes in the liners. That's to allow for some compressor air to come through. We're trying to create an air film barrier. We don't want the actual flame to touch any of the metal components. We're trying to minim or maximize the, the life cycle and keep our flame where we want it. So this is part of what we would call the dome assembly. This is where I say, hey, there's 30 nozzles that go around in a circle. I'll have pictures of a nozzle coming up. This part is our individual swirl rings and swirling assemblies. We have the cow. That's the pad. Um, there's an inner and outer cow, and they're separated you know, by the dome. We're trying to create this smooth edge. We want to control where the airflow goes. We want it to be symmetrical around the circumference of the entire combustor assembly. And we're, once again, we're back to, we want to control the flame shape, temperature, and duration, and, and make them all match as much as possible. You'll also notice that there is a coating. That is another, another thermal coating to increase longevity of those individual components. This is those openings that we saw from the front. Now we're seeing them from the backside. So this is the swirling assembly. And you can see there's connections or openings for the air to come in from compressor discharge. So it's kind of shaped in a spiral. Well, by spiraling the air as we come through, we kind of create that fire tornado concept where we keep our flame in a tight shape and we get to direct where it goes so it doesn't touch any of those metal components like the liners or a cowling or anything else. So all about increasing longevity. And if you look here where these meet, it, it looks like there's slop there. These actually move quite a bit. Um, that's to allow for the thermal growth and contraction of the fuel nozzles. We'll talk about the PD in a little bit. Um, you can actually start getting vibration and harmonics issues. PC doesn't have that problem because it's symmetrical and circumferential all the way around the machine and evenly spaced are these assemblies and all of those are ignited with via their fuel nozzles at the same time. So don't have to worry about harmonics 
or excessive noise and vibration, but they do move. Um, and these are an expand, expendable piece. So this can, can come out and you just replace it with a new one. We don't typically rebuild these. They're not you know, terribly difficult to manufacture and they're available. But you can see some parts here. We have a Venturi and you can see this white coating. That's what I was showing you from the front. That's part of our you know, swirl cup assemblies. There's primary and secondary and we'll see some more detail in that in the sketch that's coming. So as promised, here's a sketch of what we are seeing in our, our combustor. So this would be one of our swirl assemblies with where a fuel nozzle would go in. Whereas these liners, these would actually be going all the way around in a circle. So you can see the overlapping plates. These are welded to each other. And of course they're mounted at the aft end. So what we're seeing here is those. We're just looking at one spot in this in this ring. And then I was referring to the inside edges or the high temperature side. This is the inside has the special thermal coating that goes all the way around. And that's just to increase the longevity of the component. What we're seeing here is the swirling assembly. This is the part that I was showing you a picture and said, hey, this moves around. This is where we bring in the air and we give it the shape, you know, to control the flame shape. This is just a cutaway view of it. So right here, you can see they're just showing you a few of the ports where the air comes in. And that's this, that's what we're seeing here. Got a few other parts. So it is a Venturi shape, meaning it reduces pressure and increases velocity. Again, we wanna keep that flame in the middle and away from the sides. We don't want any kind of splash back onto the dome plate or anything like that, because we wanna make this last as long as possible and we want to keep that flame length and duration inside that box we're all about minimizing emissions and of course there's also engineering that goes into it for increasing efficiency and power output we do want to get want to get as many btus as possible because what's going to happen is this this hot gas that's rapidly expanding i mean you can kind of see the shape is already pushing it into a nozzle it's going to go into nozzles and go into the high pressure turbine low pressure turbine that's a separate topic. We're just looking at the combustor assembly, but everything is, is all engineered for this end game of maximum power output and minimizing our emissions production. The cowling that was on the dome, this is just so it meets up with the liner. That's what we are looking at here. And then there's a swirler cup and the trumpet splash plate. That's, again, we're trying to keep the actual highest peak temperatures off of our metal components. Continuing on, we'll go ahead and take a look at the actual fuel nozzle. So this, this part is going to insert into the swirler cup, as we've already shown. This specific one is a dual fuel fuel nozzle for a PC LM6000. We have a pretty good cutaway of what it looks like if we, you know, cut one of these in half. So starting down here, this is going to be our main natural gas connection. So the hose will come in. You can see that the threads have been cut and, and attached there. Then the next port is for water. Remember, this is a, a water injection or wet machine, meaning we need water to maintain temperature in the flame. So that we can minimize our NOx production. The next port, if needed, would be for liquid fuel. If liquid fuel is not being used in this machine, then we just cap that off and block it. And then finally, we have the shroud tip. And we're going to go into some detail about the shroud tip. So this is the shroud tip up close. There are a series of ports on the tip. And we'll look at what each one is for. So natural gas being our primary is going to come out the circumferential holes located here. Then from the center port will be our water and liquid fuel if applicable. And then the remaining there's, you notice there's a gap here on the outside ring. And then there's ports back here on the aft end of the, of the uh, fuel nozzle. Those are for shroud air. That's what we call it, but it's compressor discharge air. 
So remember we talked about that there's going to be various ports located throughout the combustor assembly. That's to provide a, a film of air so that the flame never actually touches our, min our metal components. If you look, these ports are kind of facing backwards, and that would be so compressor air will come out, and it drives the flame forward, per minimizes the risk of any flame splash back from coming back and touching our metal com components. And then same thing up here, our shroud air, we're going to try to keep this assembly as cool as possible and keep the flame away from the actual fuel nozzle uh, shroud tip. Let's take a look at the dry low emissions assembly. Conceptually, it's the same, but instead of one ring of fuel nozzles in a nice concentric circle, there's actually three rows of nozzles in a PD or dry low emissions machine. And this is the same view just from behind the, the assembly. Notice it has the same coating. Conceptually, how it works is, is the same. Just how we ignite them and when is a little bit different. And then the fuel nozzle build is a little bit different. So our sketch for our dry low emissions machine, when we take a look at when we, the, the PC version just had one combustor nozzle inside of it. And we had the swirl cup and it was in a ring. Well, this has three different nozzles inside. That's because they get ignited at different times. It just depends on megawatt loading. So instead of using water to keep our temperature low enough so that we minimize NOx production but ensure that we burn out the carbon monoxide, we do this by staging the different fuel valves such that the overall temperature is maintained via determining which one of these is ignited. But conceptually it's the same. We're gonna have compressor discharge air come in our fuel is fed and it's going to get which which one of these burners it goes to depends on which staging valve is opening you can see there's three separate lines and I'll, I have a picture and it'll make a little bit more sense for this one overall the shape is the same right we're going to push this into the nozzle so that we have our rapidly expanding gases go into the high pressure turbine so it does the same thing so we've got a couple variations some of the rows have three nozzles in them and then some have two. A little bit different going on in the center. So the PC on the back side had, you know, some ports where the air was fed in. This is more kind of permanent fixed veins, but it does the same thing. We want to get that air swirling around in a circle so we can keep our flame shape nice and tight and symmetrical. This kind of all goes back to because things are not ignited symmetrically around the combustor assembly, we, we're, we're trying to minimize this vibration and these harmonics. And whether it's one or two is irrelevant. The configuration and how it works is the same. You can see the pipe coming through for our natural gas connection. So I talk about, you know, hey, there's, there's these different rings. Well, there's actually an, an Alpha Bravo and a Charlie. Bravo is your pilot ring. It's always on. So once we have ignition in the machine, we're always going to have Bravo on. This is just a representation of a dry low emissions schedule. It may not be exactly this. There are spe specially trained personnel. Uh, they have to have a lot of experience and they will come out and tune your machine. You know, I mentioned one of the cons for a dry low emissions machine is you need to have seasonal tunes. The performance of the engine will vary based on ambient conditions, humidity and temperature. So you need to have a tune that makes sure that these actual firing points line up with what the machine requires. So maybe maybe the overlap isn't at 12 megawatts. Maybe it's at 10 for your machine. Maybe it's at 14. You know, each one's unique. And tuners can come out and they call this mapping. They will come out and map your machine based on the conditions that you, you require and the machine's performance. So you can see at lower power, you know, Bravo ring, pilot ring is always on, and then it'll bring in Charlie ring as we exceed megawatts. And then at this transition, you're gonna turn off the Charlie ring and turn on the alpha ring. And of course our bleed air, BSVs, VBVs, and a PD has variable inlet guide vanes as well. They'll be cycling as necessary on a program. And this is how we maintain this box. 
you know, all the way up to kind of this 25 to 30 megawatt range. And then at some point, all three rings will be ignited. You know, we're chasing maximum power and we can go to base load. So that is one thing that's different for a PD or dry low emissions machine is they do have fuel staging valves. This is what's turning on and off to determine which of our nozzles actually get fuel. So which combustor actually has flame. There's 11 of them. This is not on the machine right now. This is you know out in our depot, staged, ready to go on the next machine. Um, once it's on the machine, these will be parallel to the ground. They look like they would be perfect steps. Uh, they are not steps and they go through great lengths of putting signs and, and labels on them that say no step. Do not use it as a ladder. Please don't, you will damage them and they're very expensive. Uh, we're not gonna go into terrible much detail for the PD. It's not as common a machine uh, as compared to the PC machine. But if you have one, then you'll you know, have to have some level of knowledge about how these components work and the differences between the two. And I think that's going to wrap it up for the combustor assemblies, fuel nozzles for PCs and PDs. Thank you.